guys, my name is Sam and I make videos about makeup, chronic illness, and whatever I want. And today I'm going to share with you 10 tips to survive the summer as a chronically ill person. I'd like to start this by saying that anyone who says the summer is their favorite season is either lying or a sociopath. Think you like the spring, the late spring. It's 70s, low 80s, it's gray and it's breezy. Nobody likes when it's 100 degrees and humid. You can't do anything. And if you want to challenge me, give up all of your luxuries, give up your air conditioning and just exist in your favorite season. That's how I know that you're lying. All jokes aside, for real, none of us like when it gets too hot, especially those of us with chronic illnesses. It is really hard to function on a day-to-day -day basis with chronic illness, but you add these really high temperatures and a lot of us just kind of melt. Especially the climate change summer. Things are getting more unpredictable. Where I live, it is hotter than it ever was when I was growing up. It is not supposed to be this hot, it just isn't. And I'm actually bulk filming today because it's just supposed to stay in the hot 90s until October basically, which is not normal in any capacity. So today I'm gonna share the 10 facts or 10 tips that help me survive barely the summer. And yes, maybe I'm a little bitter because I don't have a pool. Let's just dive right into it. Tip number one is pretty obvious. Just stay inside. Sounds easy, right? Especially between the hours of 10 and 4, it's going to be the most hot and the most direct sunlight. If you have to go outside, make sure that you're avoiding the direct sunlight as much as you can. I understand that not everyone has air conditioning. It is a privilege which I think it should be a right. Everyone deserves to be comfortable. If you can find a public place and it's safe for you, like a library or something, to spend those hot hours, at least a few of them, in to cool off, that would be really helpful. Number two is loose, cool clothing. I've noticed that we've kind of been conditioned that like less clothing is better, but other cultures like India, the Middle East, and even Japan are really adamant about keeping their body covered from the sun with loose light fabrics that flow and don't like constrict your body we kind of go the opposite tight clothing and more skin exposed to the sun which it increases your risk for sunburn but also the heat from the sun is just heating you up kind of like a hot dog i found last year after purchasing a long sleeve top that was meant for this purpose, loose fitting, it actually had UV protection, very loose. I tolerated the exposure much better and stayed a lot more cool. I also highly recommend wide brim hats to keep the sun off your face, chest, and neck. I got one from Duluth Trading Company and uh, it has like vents here, so it lets all the hot air out, but it definitely keeps my body cool and my head was significantly cooler as well, so that's a tip. Number three is Kind of obvious as well, stay hydrated. But with a chronic illness, you're going through hydration even quicker than everyone else, so this is really important. If you have pots like me, you need more than just water. You need something with salt and electrolytes. So adding that in with regular liquids is super helpful. My favorites are smart water, body armor, and liquid IV. Also avoid as much caffeine as possible. Caffeine is a diuretic and it will dehydrate you faster. So make sure that on hot days you don't have any of that iced coffee that we all love. But also like to add that a Hydro Flask, if you like your beverages to stay cool, is a great investment. It isn't just hype, it truly keeps your water or whatever else you put in it cool for a really long time. And too much cold water can upset my stomach, but I do like little bits of it because it does cool my body off. Number four, these are all kind of obvious, I guess, fans, especially a battery operated fan. So like I said, not everyone has the option to be in air conditioning or they can't afford to run it very often. Fans are a great alternative. You just kind of mist yourself with a water bottle and lay in front of a fan and it cools you off really nicely. But a battery fan is something I just invested in and I highly recommend it. If you must be outside, you can take it outside with you anywhere and you don't need a plug because it runs on a battery. I also like it for places where maybe there isn't a plug available, like maybe you're in a small space or something. Really helps keep the air moving. Number five, blackout curtains or 
a blackout addition to the curtains you already have. You can just buy the blackout backings. Your main goal when it's hot out is to just completely cut contact with the sun. You don't want it entering your house or apartment or anything. You want to keep it out. So having a blackout curtain or a blackout addition really keeps that heat out of your living space. I've noticed adding them to our living room has kept it at least five degrees cooler and warmer in the winter. So that, if you live somewhere that also gets cold, that is a great purchase. I think they have been worth every penny. Number six, ice packs and an eye mask. This is a great way to keep your pressure points cool, which lowers your body temperature in general and helps regulate where you're at. Pressure points are the back of your neck, the insides of your wrists, the insides of your ankle, by the you know little bone, the backs of your knees. So you could put a cold pack in any of those places and it will help you cool down your internal temperature. I love the ice mask one because it just feels super comfortable, but something about also cooling my head and face just helps cool me down. It's also fantastic if you have allergies. Number seven is a cool bath or shower. I've always referred to this as a poor man's pool because we don't all have pools, but it kind of feels like one. It's a great way to lower your whole body temperature without having to have air conditioning or adding it to air conditioning. I love to do this before I go to sleep, especially it keeps me cool and regulated most of the night. And uh, even when I did have access to a pool, I would shower off in a cool shower, swim before I went to bed and it really, really helped on those hot days. Number eight, if you're tired, nap. I know we all hate sleeping our time away, but your body is working really hard to regulate your temperature when it's hot, and it's already working a lot to just fight whatever it's fighting with chronic illnesses. So give it some assistance and just sleep when you need to sleep. Number nine, keep easy foods and meals. You won't have a massive appetite when it's hot, but you still need to eat because your body's burning a lot of energy, so we have to fuel that. I like to keep things like lunch meat, pre-cut vegetables like carrots, uh, celery, cucumbers. I like to make sure nothing is too heavy because sometimes that can make you feel sick if it's kind of hot, but things like that are great to have around. Some kind of light TV dinner, etc. And my last tip is kind of a fun one. Keep a cool treat. It tastes good, it cools you off, and it just improves your mood. Who doesn't like that? I really personally like popsicles because ice cream can be too heavy and just kind of like not sit well in my stomach when it's hot at all. Personal favorite is bomb pops, but having something like that to have during the day or in the evening just really is a mood booster, but it also does help regulate your body temperature and cool it down a little because you're eating something cold. That is all the tips I have for you and they're probably not new, but I was thinking about this the other day and how the heck I stay cool. If you have any tips, please let me know in the comments because I am desperate for ways to stay comfortable during these heat waves. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time.